Good afternoon. It's good to see you. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, reflect on uh, one of the readings that was earlier this week, one of the gospel readings, I believe it was Tuesday. Um, and it's the, it's the scene where we see Jesus, he's in Capernaum, in the synagogue in Capernaum. And um, he encounters, you know, of course, he's teaching and preaching. And he encounters a man possessed. The man is possessed by an unclean spirit. And, you know, the spirit, the demon, says to him, I know who you are, the Holy Son of God. What, well, have you come to destroy us? You know, who, you know what, do, what do you come to do with us, right? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus just, it says, he, he, he said, said to him, brute rebuked him, said, quiet, come out of him. And immediately the, the demon is exercised, right? And it says, without harming the man, um, the demon, you know, gives this loud scream and, you know, exits the man, right? Now, what does this tell us about truth and goodness? I think that's what I said. What, what can demons teach us about truth and goodness? Demons teach us how evil, true evil, responds in the presence of truth and goodness. Christ is true and good. Another thing to remember is that the man possessed by the demon is not evil. The man possessed by a demon is not evil. He has been taken over by evil. And I think that's an important thing to remember. That Christ, it is, this, it is the evil, the, the demon that is provoked by the presence of God and the truth that he proclaims. The, 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 the demon that has grabbed hold of this man. Who is, in turn, in being, in encountering truth, is free from the captivity of the demon. And I couldn't help but think about this and pray about this. This is what I preached on, if, if, for those who came to Mass on Tuesday. The reality that evil is provoked by good, by the presence of good. This demon encounters truth itself in Jesus Christ. And he responds viciously and like violently. When he's expelled from this man, he screams because he knows he has no power. Because he's in the presence of true power and true authority, Jesus Christ. But it's an important thing to recognize. And I couldn't help but think of the many ways in which we have seen in our culture, in our world, in our society today, mostly through, you know, social media, how people, there are groups of individuals who, are, who when they hear something that, that is true, that they don't like, not always, but sometimes, they just, there's this violent reaction against it. And there's I've seen a lot of videos, compilation videos of people melting down, you know, because of because this is said or that is said. And that's not Christ. You ever see Christ melt down? You see him be firm. You know, you see him, you know, have a firm voice. I imagine when he said quiet, come out of him, that it was probably pretty, pretty heavy voice. We, we see God's anger, his just anger. Right. And when he. When he dispels the, the, the merchants from the temple, right? But we don't see Jesus melt down. He always has full control of his emotions. But evil will always be provoked in the presence of good and truth. Let me make another example. Let me make another connection here, though. Again, a reminder the man who is possessed by the demon is not evil. There are many people we will encounter who, is, who have been taken up in ideologies and, and you know, popular belief and, and, and things that are not true. 
and are not root, rooted in any sort of reason. The things that, the more you explain them, the less they make sense. You know, caught up in the pure pressure of, of society or the, the, the popular belief. You know, truth is not determined by a consensus. Truth, it stands on its own merit. Um, but recognize those who may stand in opposition of, of, of those who stand for the truth are not in themselves evil. Someone who is given up, given into something that is false doesn't mean that they hate the concept of the time and true mentality of, of Catholic Christians is hate the sin, love the sinner. God loved this man who was possessed, who had been taken over, whether voluntarily or involuntary, we don't know, but was taken over by and, and more, was found, was, was captive in it and, and held slave by this demon, by this false truth. And Christ, in, in speaking the truth with authority, frees him. And so we see how God reacts to us and, and, and engages in us. He wants to speak truth into our lives. And he has put people in their lives. He's given us the church. He's given us um, the saints and the, and the councils and, the, and, the, and scripture and tradition and all of these things to speak truth into our lives. And to teach us how it is, what it is to truly live. To live a good and holy life. Live a life of happiness and fulfillment. Because that life is in, the, is in conformity with truth. The truth that he shows us and reveals to us. The truth that is written on our hearts. We, we know good and evil. It's written in our, in, our, in, our, in, our, it's in our DNA. We're made in the image and likeness of God, right? We know that it's not, you know, ask any child if it's okay for someone to steal, take something that belongs to them. They'll say, no, it's mine, <laughs> right? And sometimes that's in a, a, a little bit more of a possessive way, but still, there's a concept that thou shalt not steal, right? Um, so, to recognize that, we have to recognize distinguish the demon from the one being possessed by the demon. We need to distinguish, make the distinction between the, the false truth or the lie and be able to separate that from the one spreading the lie because the one spreading the lie might be just as duped as the rest of the people in the room. Just, I mean... How many people have you said that I've seen also lots of conversations where someone is vehemently for something and in talking and having a conversation and explaining truth, they're like, oh, I see the, the lack of logic in my argument. I see now the truth and, and now I see how the truth is desirable, even if I don't like it. Often, I think... People don't, uh, individuals, people or groups of individuals don't want to accept the truth because they know that they have to change the way they're living. I know that I don't often, that when I don't want to change the way I'm living, I, I avoid the truth. And I have in my life, but frankly, by the grace of God, he keeps beating me over the head, right? This is what you need to do. This is what you need to not do so that you can live a free life a disciplined life, a virtuous life, a holy life. So with that, let us in a particular way pray for those who stand in opposition to the truth. Those who are have given in to the, the popular lies of our time. And to pray for strength and in our own lives that we too will not be give, give, give way to the popular lies of our time but root ourselves in Christ, the fullness of the truth, and his grace, his love, his mercy, and his justice, and true justice. In the, name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I offer this chaplet for the intention just spoken. Um, for an increase of 
devotion to the Eucharist, in our lives and in our church, for the freedom to all be able to come back and, and, and be one with one another in, in, in each other's presence in the celebration of the Mass, for healing in our, in our homes, our society, in our church, in the world, for all those we love and promise to pray for. You expired, Jesus, for the source of life gushed forth for the souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, and foul of divine mercy, and fill up the whole world, and empty yourself upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus, is a font of mercy for us. I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus, as a font of mercy for us. I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus, as a font of mercy for us. I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Eternal God, in whom mercy is in us, and the treasure of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us. Then in difficult moments we may not despair and become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle and be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Mary conceived without sin, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Faustina, pray for us. St. Andrew, St. Francis Xavier, and all our patron saints, pray for us. Father Cape and all the angels and saints in heaven, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me today for our reflection and praying in the chapel. Uh, know that I love you. God loves you. Praying for you. Keep praying for me, my brother priests, the church, for our bishops, uh, for our country and world. Um, God bless you, and I will see you on the next video.